know me, my, I am a research assistant at the Prosody Lab at McGill University, and what I'm here to do is just to give a series of brief video tutorials about how to use some of the tools we've developed for doing research at our lab. Um, what I did in my last video was I showed you how to use one of these tools, which is the Prosody Lab Aligner, uh, and I showed you what it does, which is forced alignment. Um, so if you're interested in what it does, you want a better intro, you should probably go check that out. Um, if you don't want to, you know, go back and see the entire video, if you just want a refresher, for example, this is just a reminder that if you've downloaded the aligner, um, the README is included in it. You can always open that up. Uh, and get, for example, a tutorial, uh, which starts on line 150, but there is also installation information, uh, as well as an FAQ, and what we're going to be talking about today, which is the usage of a whole bunch of different options. So if you want to get started right away, feel free to uh, open that up and jump right in and sh uh, shut this video off. But, of course, if you want a more in-depth um, introduction to it, you want to know more what it does, please keep watching. So, uh, first things first, and this is just a bit of a review from last time, is we actually have to get to this folder uh, in a different program in order to use it. So that program is Terminal. Uh, I've put it in my dash, but if you don't know where it is on your own computer, it's in your Applications folder, under the Utilities folder, Terminal. And I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing better. Okay. So, in order to get there, uh, this is also just a refresher, you have to type cd, change directory, a directory is a folder, uh, it's on my desktop, and it's the Prosody Lab Aligner. So now that I'm here, I can actually use anything that's in this folder. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you uh, what the help options are again. So to do that, you can run the aligner uh, with this H option and nothing else. So the H option will just display the help screen so you can know what all your other options are. Um, so first option, here's our list of options. First one is A, which will perform speaker adaptation with or without prior training. Uh, unfortunately, this is currently in the testing stage, so I'm not going to be demoing it here. All right, so the second option is this D option, and it says D dictionary, where you can specify a dictionary file. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick demo um, of what this means. So what this means is uh, there's a dictionary file that you should have in your aligner folder. Um, and this is what the default means. It means that when you do alignment, just normally, whoops, and actually I'll just get my demo up. and it makes an alignment, it's actually using this dictionary to look up all the uh, phonetic pronunciations of the words. But you don't necessarily have to use that dictionary, so that's what this D option is for. So if you want to use a different one, all you have to do is do dash D space, let's say I want to use this dictionary called New Dictionary. And then I can drag and drop that there, and you don't necessarily have to use one that's already in your folder, you can use one in a different folder so long as, you know, um, the program terminal knows where to find it. And in order to know where to find it, you can just drag and drop into your window. Uh, and then, of course, then you put in your data that you want aligned. And it'll do the exact same thing. So, you can. that's how you use a different dictionary. Uh, what other options are there? So, we know how to use a different dictionary. Um, you know how to get a help message. Uh, so next option is M, which says to list files containing out-of-dictionary words. So in order to actually know what out-of-dictionary words are, what this M flag is doing, M flag, sorry, option is doing, um, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you what out of dictionary words are. So, first things first, let's say I want to use a different dictionary. I'm going to use this dictionary here called lapsed dictionary. And if you know, if you can guess why it's called that, 
you're already way ahead of me. <laughs> so, um, we're going to be using this dictionary on this data. And we get an error which says that they're out of dictionary words, and there's this file called out of dictionary.txt that we're going to open. So I'm just going to open it using terminal. And I'm going to spec I'm going to open it with text edit because it's smaller. And there we go. So we can see that the missing word that isn't in the dictionary is lapsed, hence the name. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that open. I'm just going to call it a different name. And to do that in terminal, you can just type mv, which is called move. And it's just basically moving. Moving is a way of um, renaming. So I'm going to call it, I'm going to move this information from the title out of dictionary.txt to new words. And now you can see actually up here that it's called new words. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before, but I'm going to run uh, this with the M option as well as this different D option. So here's my dictionary. I'm going to be using this one. But I want to match uh, the missing words to the files that they occur in. So I'm just going to do that, type in my test. And now, of course, it's just going to generate another out of dictionary word file, but I'm just going to open that. Uh, and actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up. So if you press the up arrow, it'll just recall um, everything that you've done beforehand. And that way, you can easily re, uh, um, recall uh, what you've done and redo it. So here we have our editor dictionary file. You can see that it's this file that's problematic. So if we just open that up, um, which one is it? I'll just copy paste this. All right, and as you can see, it's the text of it is an agreement lapse. So this is the file that is um, has the missing word in it. And the m the uh, m option is very useful uh, in this case where you can see okay does this occur once? Is this a, you know does this occur many times? Uh, what files happen to have these problematic words in them? Um, so if you're trying to figure out okay what what went wrong with my data? Why is it not? Um, Recognizing these words, for example, uh, this way you can find out which files are causing the problem. So, now that we know what files are causing the problem, we actually have to put this... Uh, I'm just going to show you how to put this word back in the dictionary. So what you can do is you can just, you know, in this file, add the pronunciation by hand. Uh, I I'm just using the CMU phones. I'm very familiar with them. If you're not too familiar with them, you can always open up the dictionary and search for things that rhyme uh, or have similar sounds in them and figure out uh, what to write in from there. But I'm not going to show you how to do that. So now that we have a pronunciation, we can just sort it back into the dictionary uh, using this mini script that is included uh, in the aligner called sort. So I'm just going to run sort. I'm going to take our dictionary. This dictionary was the one that was missing it. I'm going to sort new words into it. I'm going to call this file tmp. I'm just giving it a temporary name. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it, oh, say new dictionary. And now if we look here, uh, there's a new dictionary file as well in our folder uh, that should have should be the combination of lapsed and our uh, new words file. And actually, if I just open it and search for lapsed, yes, now we have a lapsed uh, version, and it's all sorted alphabetically within the rest of the dictionary. So. Um, that's what the M option does. That's how you sort things into the dictionary. This is how uh, the aligner 
uh, will work if you have, you know, missing words in your lab files. So, uh, now that that's done, there's actually, and I only have five minutes, but we can do this. There are actually three more options if you looked at the help menu again. So there are all these options, there's N, S, and T. Um, and the most important one of these is T because you cannot use N or S if you are not using T. So what T does is it performs model training. So what model training is, is what it's going to do is it's going to create a whole new uh, way of um, doing forced alignment. It's going to create an entire new set of models for each of the phonemes that it will uh, later use to do just general alignment. Um, so in order to do that, it has to have a whole set of data on which to train. So this is what this training folder is. So this is the data we're going to use to create a whole new set of models um, with the aligner. So uh, to do that, you run the aligner, you use a training uh, option. So you press T, and then after the T, well, you don't press T, you type T. And after the T, um, you put in your training folder. And then after that, you put in the folder where you want things to be aligned. And actually, just before we get that started, I'm going to remove all these text grids so you can actually see what happens. So, here we go. Okay, so now it's training, uh, and so what it's doing is it's just going through uh, all of these files um, and generating models. Then it adds, as you can see, silence, it trains them again, uh, it realigns everything, it trains them again, and then it aligns um, your test data one more time. So, as you can see, uh, the training data, nothing happens to it. This is just raw data um, what it, in which it uses to make new models. But it'll realign the test data. And the second thing you'll notice is that only four text grids get generated here. Um, and not all six. This is probably just because we just do not have enough training data um, available. And normally you would want two to four hours. I definitely do not have two to four hours of training data uh, in this folder. Um, it's much, much less than that. So our models, just the data that it's um, using to make the training just is not robust enough to actually make a good enough model to align everything, so it won't align everything. So, um, you can do that, and that's how you use training, but there are, of course, those other two options. And the way that you use those, uh, and actually I'll just display them again for you. So the two things that you can change are the number of training iterations for each step of training. So each step of training being all this training, additional training, final training. So what it does is it'll go through all of your sample, your training data, um, n number of times. The default's four, but if you want to change that, you can use this n option. Um, as in a similar vein, it sets the default sample rate to 8,000. But if you want to change that, if you want to make it higher or lower, um, you're going to have to use this S option. So uh, just to demo how that works, let's say I want to do oh, six rounds uh, for each uh, step of training. And I want to use a sample rate of, say, 16,000 just rather arbitrarily. And then we have to type T. Here's our training data. Here's our test data. And sometimes it takes a while to initialize. This is just because it's checking uh, the training and the test data to make sure that it's complete, that you have a lab file for every wave file, um, that you all the words in both folders uh, are present in the dictionary. And so, yep, now it's done training. Uh, as you can see, not much changed when we changed these particular parameters. Uh, we only got four text grids in the uh, again. But, of course, this probably also has to do with our training data as well. 
So, uh, I hope you find that, found that useful. I hope you know a little bit more about all the options you can use on the aligner. And uh, tune in next time, because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to uh, install the aligner on your own computer. Thanks!